John Doyle from Optics EQ and today's video race of the day, December the 8th, Wednesday, is jokingly going to be called Kickback Wednesday because I'm going to use the word kick, the keyword, the Optics Notes keyword, kickback to try to identify some contenders during the day. And it's unusual uh, to get many contenders who had kickback in their last race, but it seems like uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, there seems to be a lot of uh, opportunity there. So I'm going to start off at looking at the rod. Again, what Rod does, it pulls, I'm going to just click that. Okay, it pulls all the horses that are running uh, on Wednesday, it puts them into a table, and uh, you could filter on keywords or other information. There's a bunch of things that key, there's a bunch of keyword filters you can use. Now I'm going to use the notes keyword kickback here. I'm going to type it in. And you see, I get a bunch of horses. This is kind of unusual. There's a lot of horses. You know, there's four horses actually who had kickback in their last race. But I'm going to start with the number six, Living Water. That horse had kicked back two races back. And you can see the horse uh, had an excuse, EX, uh, and then, you know, as an optics note grade and ran a 63 optics fig at Keeneland. Uh, he ran next time at Goldstream, improved 18 optics fig points. So you can see this horse probably got the benefit of the kickback two races back. Probably not going to have the same kind of upside, so I'm going to kind of move on to the next one, but it just shows you, again, the power of the kickback. The next horse I'm going to focus on is uh, Penn National Race 3, the number 12, Superiority, okay? And you're going to look at um, the grid here for, for that race, and you can see there's a bunch of first-time starters. And I'll be honest, I'm looking at the first-time starter work tabs, and nothing's jumping out at me. Uh, I think the winner is going to be a horse that's already run. And let's look at the ones that have already run before we get to superiority. Uh, the three was an aqueduct horse. Gives him a, um, you know, already, especially the maiden special, it gives him a class edge, but was on the turf going long and the horse did no running and got no bet. So he's going to have to change things up. Works don't indicate that he's going to be flying out of the gate and doing anything much different. So kind of negative on him. The two that ran pretty good in their debut, you know, well, one in their debut was uh, Kaz Lucky Numbers. I thought this was ran okay. Uh, but, you know, it was a maiden 25. So this horse is actually going up in class. And the same thing could be said of my first love who improved with the drop. So these horses are already kind of proven below, below the level to lose. So now they're moving up in class. That's kind of a negative. So that kind of leaves us with superiority who ran a 61 uh, in his debut and he kind of was slow out of the gate, rushed a little bit, but he got kicked back in the race, staying on the rail. It was a very muddy day, and you know there was the, the mud was heavy, so he got the kick back. But also he kind of there was no push. Um, kind of I, I kind of re looked at that video. It looked like there was no push in deep stretch, so they kind of like wrapped up on the horse by mid stretch. So there's really a lot of room for improvement with this horse. As you know, I haven't been high on Laurel races and coming back. They don't translate well all the way, but. This looks like an opportunity where this horse looks like he's got um, or she's got an edge just based on what she's running against at Penn here. So morning lines 10 to 1, that seems just way too high. you got a hot trainer. Um, so, you know, again, you look at the V bars when you want to look at trainer jockey kind of stuff. And you can see, I'm going to just look at, I'm just going to filter on this meat, how this trainer is doing. Uh, and you could see, look at look at the bar well above here. So, you know, this is a hot trainer for this meet. So I, I just think that this horse, if you can get even five to one, if you're lucky, I think this horse has got a big chance. Uh, and again, all started with the kickback. Going to go back to our list. Going to look at number one in Parks Race 1. We'll take control. And uh, let's take a look at this one. Okay. So now this horse... Just so you know, I mean, if you look at the other horses in the field, they've really proven that they can't run. I mean, they had so many chances at the 20,000 level, with the exception really of the eight, about the multiple, um, and it's about time. Neither one of those, when, when you bought it, just when I show you, compare it to the, the one, you know, just don't match up, especially the eight, this, this horse is already lost below the level. The horse that's going to take the most money and be the favorite is number four, Jovial, and rightfully so. This horse uh, ran at $30,000 level, and it was a pretty good race, and ran the best number, I think, in the last out of the field. So this horse, uh, for Linda Rice, takes over, looks pretty good. Uh, coming off a little bit of a layoff, 
uh, and it's going to really be overbet. You know, it's got nine to five in the morning. My guess is where it's going to be four to five. Or something. So I think the one looks interesting to me just from a price perspective, because this horse, if you look at his form, showed improvement. He dropped the horse uh, again, kept improving fig wise, ran pretty good going eight furlongs. Uh, and then they tried to turf. Not as good. It actually was a move up in class, too. And then long layoffs. So something obviously went wrong. And then this, show, this horse had kicked back. So I could really kind of, almost, if I can ignore that performance, this horse could get back to the you know mid 70s that this horse has been running. And this is the lowest level this horse has ever been at. If you look at most recent works, I like the work this horse put in, 15 of a 108 just before leaving Belmont, you know, to ship to, to uh, Philadelphia. I think this horse had a big chance at uh, four to one, uh, especially if this other horse takes all the money and again, Jovial, the other thing about Jovial is stretching out to two turns for the first time. So the advantage here to me is will take control. Um, is a horse that's already routed, run some good races routing, um, and got kicked back in his last race that might have dirtied up his form. It was the race off the layout. Okay, so that's the next one on our list. We're going to move on to Sweet Laura. I'm not going to look at Sweet Laura because this is a horse that got kicked back, yeah, but now is trying turf so, and and first time versus winners. So hard to gauge, you know, especially with the switch to turf, you know, if this horse is kind of seems like a strong contender or not. So we're going to pass on that one. And then Heaven's Tell is the last one on our list, uh, Tampa race eight. You know, this is a horse that I'm not, you know, crazy about, but again, it's another horse where there's just a lot of horses that have had their chances at this level. And this horse is dirtied up, um, was wide routing, two back, uh, and then the kickback last time. Numbers like 75, 71, sprinting, compare very nicely. You can see the range is 67 to 75. This horse fits. And when you start seeing how slow some of these other horses' current form is, and turf horses or synthetic horses, this horse really fits. What doesn't, what I don't like is the three to one morning line. Now, uh, if you can get seven to two or something like that, I would prefer uh, so this is not a horse that you know I want to take a too short of a price on. But again, just looking comparatively, um, this horse looks good if we can get back to those races um, that she ran a 71 or 70, that he ran a 71 or 75. Okay, so Heaven's Tail, a chance, um, a good chance. I just it's going to be all about the price on that one. So that's it. Um, I pretty much showed you how to use Rod, how to identify kickback horses, which is important. And to learn more about Optics Notes, please go to our website at opticseq.com. I'm John Doyle, and thanks for listening.